Are you a deviant? You know, like those of us who binge watch serial killer programs, laugh at the stupid shit people do, and revel in anything adult? Well, you found your people. Join us as we crack open the door to the padded cell and release the insanely stupid, the weirdly wonderful, and those who choose to live outside societal norms. We'll delve into the strange, the macabre, the sexy, and the outrageous. So if you're a deviant, then you have your place with us in the padded cell. Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Pada Cell podcast. I'm Vicky. Here we you. Nancy. Got the cue Still. this time, love. <laughs> <laughs> Loving the Liverpool t-shirts. Thought to be a little bit cash today. Yeah, why not? Bit of LFC. Always. Fabulous. Jim will go nuts. I know. Jim's Nevertonian. Boo. Boo. Yeah, for his sins. A bit of blue. Jim will go to heaven because uh, he's had hell on earth being an Evertonian <laughs> all of his life. <laughs> So, how have you been? What's been happening? I've been good. Um, lots of fun stuff happening at work. So, Go on, give us some examples. Well, we had Pure last weekend. That was wild. Yeah, um, as always. Always. First one of the year, so it was a good one. And for those who haven't watched the previous episode, Pure is like a full-on hardcore swinging party. Not for yeah. the faint-hearted. Yep. I've known people, when I used to work at the desk at that event, to start actually stripping off layers in the queue. Oh, yeah. Quite regularly. So don't waste no just time at all. just could not wait to get in there. No. So we've had Pure. Yeah, and then I'm spending loads of time, as you know, organising our friend's hen party that she knows nothing about. And oh, we can't say nothing. I'm no. dying to like go, oh, we're doing this, we're doing so this, we're doing this. Though. Do you know what? You've done really, really well organising that hope so. hen weekend. The ideas you've come up with, I'm dead excited. Yeah, hopefully she'll love it. But I keep disappearing down like a Pinterest hole and then... Yeah. That's it. Welcome See me to me fuck on life, Nance. Every time I'm researching the podcast, I've just got like loads and loads of things that I go off yeah. on one. So, so yeah, yeah, good fun stuff. stuff. Loads of things to look forward to as well, isn't yeah. there? Good year ahead, I think. We've got a couple of weddings, obviously the the hen and stag. We've got hen and stens in the club, haven't we, to organise. We need to get our heads together about that, we by do. the way. <clears throat> so yeah, all go, go, go. Yeah. And uh, still reeling after our previous episode with Ryan. Fucking hell. I think everyone about, needed a little, little sit down, down and a breather. I mean, I call the curators of chaos, to throw Ryan into the mix. It all just goes Pete Tong completely. And he's still here. And he's still here. Lingering in, in the, the background, background like a bad smell. Like a bad fart. <laughs> 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 Which, if you've watched the previous episode, is very apt. Yeah. So... I uh, just want to say a quick hello to some of our new Patreons who've signed up recently. Thank you very much, guys and girls. We've got uh, Nadine, Gary, Alison, Tash, Luke, uh, Luke W, and Core Couture. This looks like an inter- interesting Ooh. profile. I'm going to look into it a little bit more. Uh, so thanks for signing up, guys and girls. Thanks so much for your support. Really, really appreciate it. Um, I've just got a little hospital story. Do you remember in uh, one of my previous episodes, I said to everybody, if you've got any hospital stories, yeah. send them over. I've got a little one here from Christy, came over on email. Um, And they said, when I worked in a nursing home, there was this cute old man who always cracked jokes and would smack your ass and blame it on his Alzheimer's. (laughs) I wouldn't be allowed here. You can't be in the UK. But he didn't have Alzheimer's. He used to pull his catheter out all the time, almost oh. daily. One would think that would hurt after a while, but I think he just liked that we had to come and come in and put it back in and touch his dick. Fucking Maybe hell. Maybe he just liked the pain. She said, dirty old man. I swear to you that his balls were so stretched out that when he got up, to tra- we transferred him to the toilet seat to shit. We used to use a fish net, like a little fishing net, to hold his balls so they wouldn't <laughs> touch the water and he wouldn't shit on them. I just imagine one of those little mini fishing nets <laughs> and a care of reaching between his legs to get his balls in the net oh, no. to keep them up out the water and stop him from shit on his balls. No. God, old age. I will stick to my job, thank you very much. Old age. I mean, there's more to this story, to be fair. He used to like, you know, and in the middle of the night, just walk up and down the hall with nothing on and stuff. But the little fishing nest, I can just imagine, the, like, as a carer, in your, like, your kit bag, get your fishing nest out to hell's his balls. Just imagine going home, how is your, how is your day, love? Well, yeah, it's fine, yeah. I just, uh, I had to hold Fred's nuts out the water again. <laughs> okay, now. So, yeah, a little, uh, a little hospital story. And also, I got a lovely little story on, um, on Facebook after um, your cute Christmas story. About the spiders oh, and yeah. stuff. 
So somebody called George on Facebook. Um, he said, um, hang on, where are we? He called me Lady C. <laughs> uh, hope you and Nancy are well. We are. Uh, I've been listening on Spotify since the start. Just followed you on Facey. People like the fact that I call it Facey. <laughs> I actually call it Facebook as well. Yeah. And I call Twitter Twitter. Yeah. It's not called Twitter anymore. I used to call Instagram Instacom, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> anyway, so he said, uh, this Christmas tree chocolate story. Oh, it was my story about the Christmas, about the chocolate, sorry. Uh, brought back memories of my grandparents and I was howling with laughter. My parents had a chocolate clown that had to go on the tree every year called Phil, after my granddad, Phil the clown. <sighs> Phil could not be placed on the tree until all of the de- de- um, decorations were on the tree and we were sat down watching the telly. As with a real tree, there's always that one branch that was in the way of the TV and that was the branch that Phil sat on. Uh, and it was just like my granddad, my nan said, always in the way and blocking the view of the telly. And that's why my parents called the clown chocolate, uh, chocolate clown, the fi- hang on, Phil the <laughs> chocolate clown. Fucking hell, I can't even read. <laughs> okay, so we had Phil for 15 years or so till our dog had a nibble and then we had to lay Phil to rest. <laughs> R.I.P. Phil. Thank you for the memories that flooded back to me when I heard your story. Grandpop used to say, do a little something you like and a lot of some of the things that you don't like. I don't know what that means, but anyway, thanks for that, <laughs> Phil. But, ah, oh, the clown. Anyway, I thought that was funny. Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> It's obviously the way you tell them, and I didn't tell it very well. I'm going to move on to this segment. I did. Sorry, George. It was a lovely story, and I told it really shit. I will. Do you know what? I might say, George, give us a little voice note, mate, and you tell it because I told it really, really shit. It's been a long morning, to be fair. Oh, I'm still traumatised. So today, I'm gonna. I was going to tell some Lady C stories. Um, but I'm going to tell a little smashing of club stories because some people um, over on, on the gram and Facebook, um, will I get sued for saying that? No, 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 no. Okay. You're fine. Facebook, 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 Facebook. Yeah. Um, they've been saying, uh, we love the Lazy Sea stories, um, but what about some of like, you know, other stuff that happens in the club? Mm-hmm. Now, I can't be too specific about what happens on Swing and Nights because just the nature of what it is and sometimes it's easily identifiable. But also, some of them are just not fit. I just can't, I just can't tell yeah. some of them. So I'm just going to tell some little funny things that have happened over the years uh, that don't include you know, actual fuckery. Mm-hmm. So the first one was um, <clears throat> on the very first big party night we had in the club when Jim and I first took over, so 2011, 2012. And it's one of the biggest party nights of the year anyway. It's Halloween. But it was big for us because it was the first big night that we were proving ourselves as owners of the club. Yeah. So I was fucking shitting myself, to be honest with you, you know, really wanting to deliver this amazing party. And it was a brilliant party in the end. But we had this DJ in who decided it was a really great idea. And it was about half 11 at night. So half the people were downstairs, half the people were upstairs already having a lovely time. And the DJ decided to release the smoke machine. (laughs) And me and Jim just didn't realise that the smoke machine would set all of the fire alarms off. And uh, across the whole building. And when our fire alarms go off, uh, the sensors that hold the doors open all release the doors. And in a millisecond, the whole club just went bang, 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 bang. Every fucking it's door in the club. It's scary, isn't it, it's when it It's very happens. scary. And the alarms went off. And everyone for a minute just went, <gasps> and then because I didn't go, ah, shit, and start running, the monsters went, oh, that's that's all right, <laughs> just carry on. So I'm not the sort of person to like go, oh, shit, and go into panic mode, just try to like keep calm. Bring me as I'm going, oh, shit, me, me first big party. And what used to happen then, uh, well, still does, I suppose, when the alarms go off, we have this custodian service mm-hmm. and they phone up and say, do you need a fire engine or not? What they used to do back then was, we're sending a fire engine out. If you don't answer this phone and give us like the heads up, we are sending it out. Yeah. Anyway, I couldn't get to the phone quick enough. I was calm. The guests down, fire brigade turns up. The custodian on the phone, do you need a fire brigade fireman? And I went, there's a fire engine outside. Oh, shit. And at the time, you used to get fined for a false alarm. Mm-hmm. So they knocked on the door and I'm answering the door in full Halloween garb. And there's about seven of them. 
outside, obviously all very interested to see Fit all this. Ones. Well, yeah. So open the door and obviously the lead fireman guy, bit fit, about 50. And he just looked at me like that and he went, uh, so this is where the fire is. Then I went, well, the fire alarms are going off. I said, there isn't a fire. I don't think I said, well, I've got to come around and check the bills. And, but in the meantime, we've been getting everybody downstairs mm -hmm. to be able to get them to the muster point. But there's people walking downstairs, obviously mid-sex. They've had the towel on and there's all these guys like tents with their penis <laughs> still erect. <laughs> and I can hear the staff upstairs going, no, mate, honestly, you need to stop right now and come downstairs. I could hear the staff going, you need to come downstairs right now. Get your but towel I'm on. nearly done. And I'm looking at everybody upstairs with the fucking erections with the towels like that really really sorry I'm sorry to spoil the moment but you know there could be a fire in the building just make your way downstairs went to the front door opened you know let the fireman in but there's these two young ones outside and they said we'll just check the perimeter and I was like are oh, you too afraid to come in they're like no 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 not at all but they wouldn't come in they did not come in the building and then three of the older ones came in and they were checking around the building with one of our staff and one was at like the fire board thing and I was with him and there's people everywhere with nothing on or very little on and they didn't the party just continued the fire alarm obviously was silenced by the time they came in and the DJ was playing some banging sounds and the fireman was like you know where the board is it's right yeah. by the main lounge where everybody dances He's like, look at the board, by the way, looking at the moon. <laughs> and all he could see was girls with either no bra on or you know, beautiful underwear on and they're living their best lives, they're dancing away and there's guys with not a lot on and erections still because they were obviously, you know, <laughs> disturbed upstairs. And the fireman went, is it always like this? I went, pretty yep. much, yeah. I went, do you want a membership? He went, eh. <laughs> I'll ask my wife. I'll ask my wife, yeah. I went, bring your wife along. I know this other guy, I think he was single. And he was like, oh, God, I wish we could stay. This looks amazing. And I went, I won't tell your boss. Just fancy dress. His boss it? was standing there and he went, well, are we here? You know. Anyway, they went out and they were there for a little while, che checking the bills and like, you know, and the young ones are still outside. And uh, they went, do you know what? That's been one of the best calls we've ever done because everything was really sound. But the funniest thing, as they came through the bar initially, there was a, a few of the bar staff there and one of our gay bar staff was like, oh my God, fireman. Yeah. <laughs> so as they walked in, for those who hadn't realised there was fire in the building, this gay bar staff was going, fireman, fireman. And the fire were like that go, yeah, like that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. Um, thankfully, they weren't getting mauled on the way and everybody was very, very respectful of them. They weren't getting touched up or anything like that. Probably much disgust of the single one that was in, yeah. the, in the crowd. But they had a great time. Everybody was really good with them. And they walked out and going, oh, I wish we could stay. What a party. I, went, <laughs> I know, we had on till three as well because we opened till three then. So my next one is similar to this because we had um, some uh, visitors in the building. Obviously, the firemen were visitors. And this was on a MILF Monday. You know this know story. This story. And uh, basically what happened, uh, it was a Monday morning and we have this event called MILF Monday. Um, I really hope you know what MILF stands for. But for the more innocent amongst us all, uh, MILF stands for Mother I'd Like to Fuck. Yep. Gilf. Grandmother I'd Like to Fuck. You get the general gist. Dilf. So we have this um, MILF Monday. It's at half 10 in the morning till half three in the afternoon. I don't know how they do it. At half 10 in the morning, I have barely opened my eyes. Never no, mind I getting the fucking it. horn. But these ladies are well up for it. And yeah. they drop the kids at school. Uh, they come in half past 10 and, and they fill the boots. Quick shower change. Back, back in time school. for the school bell at half past three. I've just done a bit of hot yoga, if anybody <laughs> asks, like, you know. <laughs> and um, and all the guys, are, you know, some of them are there all afternoon. Some of them, a, a little bit of a long lunch break for a couple of hours, come in the suits. Just in a meeting. In a meeting, yeah. Come in the suits, quick, you know, a couple of hours, back in the suits again, back to the office or whatever. It's a great day. And very broad age range as yeah. well, isn't it, from quite young it's to... Very, very varied. And it's been go. It's, our, it's the longest event we've actually held, a townhouse um, official event. And this one particular day, I was on the desk uh, managing and the internet went down. <laughs> and we need the internet legally to um, for our CCTV, for our alarms that I've just been talking about all hooked up. 
and the internet to our custodian, so we can't open without it. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. So we called Virgin. For those who aren't in the UK and don't know, you know what Virgin is, but they supply internet. And uh, <clears throat> these two guys turned up. They knew where they were coming and they were a bit nervous. You could tell when they came in. And they went, uh, can you just show us where the, the modem and everything is? And I went, it's on reception where people actually come in. I'm like, right, okay, how long have you got till you open up? I went, 35 minutes. And he went, right, okay, we can get you online. He said, but we've got to do checks and everything. I went, well, there's going to be people coming in the building. He went, oh, we'll be as quick as we can. Quick as we can, right? So they fixed the internet, got it up and running so we could open. These people started coming out and they've got the uniform on. It's obviously Virgin Media, the vans outside, everybody can see them. And uh, I think they took their time a little bit. One was behind reception with me, just check, yeah. checking wiring and all that, you know, as all these pretty ladies are walking in, his fucking eyes were on stalks, Nance. He was like that. He was obviously single. <laughs> the other guy, I think he must have been married. He was a bit more of a prude and he was just like getting on with things, you know, not enjoying it at all. Anyway, so they, they went off. They had a few little jibes from the, um, from the customers. But the story made it into the media. <laughs> and I'm now going to read you a story Um in one of the local newspapers, which went national in the end. <clears throat> the headline dipped me head in a little bit, to be honest. Two Virgin Media repairmen are given a shock after finding themselves in the middle of an orgy when called to, a, uh, to fix a swingers club's phone and broadband. They were in the middle of an orgy. We don't have orgies on reception. Fucking hell. Unless it's pure. But, you know, well, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I suppose to sensationalise it all, they've got to say they were in the middle of an orgy. You know, no, they were were just on reception, you know, but, you know, okay, I'll give you that. It's It's a headline. Two Virgin Media repairmen turned up on a job to find a swingers club had got together for a grand national themed orgy. The pair arrived at the townhouse swingers club in the Wirral Merseyside and discovered scantily clad women ready to remove their lingerie. I mean, to be fair, someone already removed the lingerie. Also in attendance were men dressed in um, towels at the event, which advertised to all fillies, jockeys, studs, stallions, and simply those who loved a good ride. I was good at writing ad words back then. However, despite invitations to join in the horse-themed fun, the repairmen carried on with the job in hand, reports that I'm not going to say what the paper is, because nobody in Liverpool says what paper nope. th- this is. Mm. After the event, the club members reportedly poked fun at the repairmen who walked in on the event. One said, I keep laughing about the Virgin Media men. They didn't know where to look. While another added, love the irony they were wearing t shirt with Virgin on. <laughs> another social media user joked the repairmen must have been looking for somewhere to put their screwdriver. Anyway, Virgin Media actually made a statement and said, we're glad to hear our engineers avoided any horseplay and went the extra <laughs> furlong by carrying out the repairs in a professional manner. <laughs> I love that they've got a sense of humour. sense of humour and brought in the whole Grand National theme thing. So funny. But um, the guys enjoyed their little time with us. Definitely, definitely enjoyed it. So another little story I've got was actually on the fetish side of things and it was very early on in the club's life. Um, And um, there was a a group of people who wanted to organise a kidnap and they wanted to kidnap this person and bundle them into a van just outside the club in the car park. I know this story too. (laughs) Anyway, so they organised it meticulously. The lady involved uh, knew about it Mm-hmm. She'd previously consented for it, but she didn't know when exactly it was going to happen. And she'd consented for that as well. So yeah. it could happen at any time. And we call it consensual, non-consensual kink. So basically you're consenting for something, but you don't know when it's going to happen. So at the time it happens, you're not consenting, but you've con- previously consented yeah. for that to happen. It's a bit confusing, but I know what I mean. <laughs> um, so anyway, she turns up to the club one day not knowing that this was going to happen. And one of our regulars, we've mentioned him before, Dave the Pervert (laughs) was involved and a few other guys. And um, she got out of her car, they bundled her into the back of a van. I think it was a white van and drove off. And the idea is to just drive her off somewhere, have a little bit of fun in the back, you know, smack around a little bit the way she wanted and then bring her back. However, 
somebody, however. some nosy fucker, or shall I say some very concerned member of the public, <laughs> actually saw her getting bundled into the van and phoned the police. And um, <laughs> officer, officer, I've just seen a woman getting bundled into the back of a van. A van. So anyway, and they said where it was. Next thing is, they phoned the club. Now, it was the old owner who actually picked up the phone. Uh, he hung around the club for a little while during the transition. And um, <laughs> he thought that the people that had organised it were playing a joke on him. He didn't think it was the police. Mm. So he answered the phone and he had Merseyside police and he went, <laughs> yeah, not nice. And he said, uh, we believe, uh, we've had a report that uh, a lady has been bundled into the back of a van. And he was like, uh, no, of course not. And he's like, well, you know, there's obviously been, uh, there's some distress, a, a passerby saw that's witnessed it and we just want to make sure that it actually hasn't happened. Mm. And he went, you know it's happened. Didn't believe it was the police. <sighs> anyway, the police were like, uh, no, really, re we are actually Merseyside police and we need to make sure this lady is safe. So he shit himself. I was like, um, uh, yeah, yeah, this was, was all like, you know, pre-planned. She's completely consented for it and everything. Fucking, so we had to get on the phone to them and go, guys, you're going to have to come back. The police have been involved. We're going to get fucking done for this. You have to come back by the with the woman and so she can tell the police that she consented for this shit. Otherwise, we're going down. So they had to like abort and come back and prove to the police that, you know, she did actually consent for it. What a way to ruin your scene. The things we do. We actually did it. We actually organised something like this mm -hmm. last year, the year before, bundling something in the back of a, of a, um, a boot. Yeah. But I made sure that they were in our driveway with the gates closed and nobody outside can yeah. see. I filmed it as well. I was there. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so, so funny. Right, and we are a little bit short of time. So the last one that I'm going to talk about, I was going to talk about another two things, but I'm actually going to leave the other one for another time because it's a longer story. So obviously we have loads of dress up things at our club. And um, when I was on the desk all the time, I was always dressing up. There's one particular night I dressed up in full costume, full makeup. I was barely recognisable. But you know, you're dressed up, you forget, don't you? You forget. <laughs> Sometimes. That yeah. I, I had something on that wasn't like getting in my way. And when you're busy and you are concentrating on everything else, you forget how you look. Anyway, <clears throat> I believe... I can't prove this, but I believe a rival club at the time who were trying to piss me off, I think. You know about this person. Mm. I think they called the police or called fucking somebody and said that they thought that we were over capacity and illegal and he wants to steal yeah. the shit for us. And we're never like that. We're always legal and above board and all that. We decided to do that. Anyway, I got a thing on the buzzer and I looked in the camera, two policemen standing outside. So I went on the intercom and said, yeah, can I help you? And they went, uh, can we speak to the uh, person in charge? Went, yeah, that'll be me. I'll be around now. Went to the front door. Anyway, opened the front door wide. I went, hi, uh, I'm Vicky. How can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> and they both just stood and looked at me like, like that. And then went slowly looking me up and down. It was only at that point I realised I was standing in the doorway dressed in full avatar mode. <laughs> Blue face, yellow eyes, fucking feathers in my hair, uh, like a, a cat suit, an avatar cat suit. I forgot. So I was like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. And they're like, um, so, uh, are you with George? <laughs> Just I was like some fucking punter answered the door. And I went, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so embarrassed because <laughs> they were like trying to talk to me seriously and I was like all this you know anyway so they asked to see our licences our, our uh, desk list and all that and everything was completely above board and the girl who she was like being dead dead professional and the policeman the guy he was he was like looking at me like smiling obviously quite impressed but as you know in the foyer bit there's always people literally in past. and out and we, had, we shut the doors, but they were there a little while yeah. because they had to check all of our credentials. And I said, look, guys, I said, I, I know it's like you know, a bit unprofessional maybe. I said, but this is a through, a thoroughfare. I need to open these doors. Mm -hmm. I said, are you all right with that? And he went, yeah, yeah. Is everybody else dressed as an avatar? And I went, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all sorts of people walking past in all fucking crazy costumes. The policeman was having the time of his life going, like, watching everything that was going on. But the policeman was being very professional and just taking all of the notes down. And I don't think she was very impressed, to be honest That's with it, you. though, isn't it? Like, when people do fancy dress yeah. in the club, they go all out. Like, go all out, yeah. It's not just, like, a 
shit little heart or... Mom was an adult baby, like... But he looked boss, like yeah. proper full nappy on. He wasn't trying to be like an adult baby in a kink sense. Yeah. He was pretending to like be a, a baby. baby. So he walked past a, a giant bottle with a teeth on the end of it. So yeah, that was me trying to be professional at the front door. Fucking hell, man. So they're not Lady C stories today. It's just like a little bit of an insight, if you like, into some of the mad things that happen at the club. And there's loads of them, isn't there? There's loads on like the fun side. Absolutely loads. And I think, you know, over the coming months, I might just throw a few more in yeah. there because they're worth telling. Um, but I am now just, we haven't got like a middle bit today because mm-hmm. it's just, just talking about club stuff. But I am going to do like a dangly bit, which... Honestly, Nance, I would laugh at my head off when I saw it. I was how is this real? How is this a thing? <laughs> so I went on my rabbit hole. When I was buying you, your sweary plasters. My plasters. And I was buying Ryan, his posh wank kit. Thank you. Welcome. I do need feedback on that, by the way. No. No, I don't need a wank in the background. I don't think Dylan would like that. Or maybe Dylan would like that. Not on the couch. <laughs> Definitely not on the... Oh, share the glove, you're wrong. And that's just in, in time, that, for me, for the last little bit. So I found this thing, Grace. Have you ever heard of something called Meow Joanna? No, but I could probably hazard a guess. Okay. So I'm just going to show you a picture to give you an idea of what it is that I'm talking about. Do we need to get some for Lilina? Wow. Catnip joints. <laughs> Spliffs for cats, right? Why not? Uh, I mean, the actual joints themselves aren't actually available anymore, but what you can get is like tubs yeah. of it. And there's a picture of the cat actually smelling the joint, which I've, I've got to show you just because the cat's like properly into this. Meow Joanna. <laughs> Meow Joanna, joints for cats. Nice. So there's also this other stuff and um, it's, it's it's by a different company actually, but I just think the name is brilliant. So Meow Joanna is brilliant. <laughs> cat crack catnip. <laughs> that, that's what we call, we give our cat catnip and call it crap. Cat crap. Cat crap. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I've just got to read you some of the reviews, right? So the first review um, uh, says, these are quite possibly the cutest cat treats I've ever seen. 100% my cats loved it and were tripping balls for hours. Angel got serious munchies and ate half a bag of potato chips. I don't know where she even got them from. When she woke up, she licked the back of the chair for an hour and then passed out. Five out of five should make this for humans, sent my cat to Mars. (laughs) Oh my God. I just love it. And then there's another one here. So, um... I could, I can't remember. This is crack for cats. So this person wasn't really that impressed, but still give it four stars. I could not use this as it was like crack to my cats. They would zone out for like six hours, not moving after 10 minute burst of energy. I only gave a tiny bit to them, but the impact was incredibly and frankly scary. <laughs> my cat sat in the garden bed on a very hot day and wouldn't move or drink. I was worried he had been poisoned by the stuff. His eyes were crazy looking too, and it was as if he had been possessed. But both cats had similar effect from this. Both times I gave it to them. So this person gave it to them twice. And thought, just to oh, make you sure. poisoned? Oh, yeah. let's try again. They loved it, but it scared me to see how they responded to it. They kept coming back, looking back, coming back for more like it was crack. <laughs> I sent it back. They sent it back. After four goes. I mean, when you read the detail, it does say it's going to send your cats crazy. Yeah. So what do they bloody expect? I love watching our cat after this. Yeah. Right, so this is funny. I was excited to find this because now my cat can get high with me. <laughs> I may or may not have used my rolling paper to make her a meow juana, non-smokable smokable. She loved it and I enjoyed seeing her act like a young cat again. She's 14 years old but acts like she is a feisty kitten when she gets her meow juana. <laughs> Honest to God, they're absolutely raving about this stuff. Uh, I've just got one last one. My two girls go nuts over this brand. Whatever the blend is, I put them in a box and put it on the floor and one gets in the box and the other is on the outside. And I can literally count down 10, 9, 8, 7 and then 
a street fight begins. <laughs> they tear into each other and rumble on for about 10 minutes and then calm. And they groove each other and then go sound asleep. I have no idea what's in this stuff, but it's amusing to watch. Amazing. Isn't it? Fucking catnip though. Like cat crack. Me it it literally is. We call it crack and the cat just goes nuts. And then she's like dead. That cool. You see, I've um, tried catnip when I've had cats in the past and they just didn't get it at all. I've had, got the little mice with catnip in it, mm. throwing it round, throwing it in the air, spun it round by its tail. We the just get the like, raw stuff, yeah. like, like in that, just like literally like the herb sprinkler on the floor and she just goes nuts. Does she roll on it? Yeah. No way. Like all upside down and stuff and then because it's on her. She like sniffs nice. it. Nice. I wonder if it's a female cat thing because all the reviews here have mentioned female cats. Maybe. And I've had boy cats. And they didn't go for it at all. Mm. Honestly, I was having more fun with the cat nip mouse. <laughs> I was swinging it around going, oh, look at this, throwing it. And the cat's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you, you go and chase it. So, uh, yeah, I didn't get any any results out of it at all. But uh, apparently some cats love this shit. Yep. Meow Joanna. What an inspired name, though. It is. The marketing as well on it. Brilliant. I mean, making spliffs out of it. I mean, if I had, I had a cat that liked it, I'd have to make a little spliff out of it. Yeah. Not that I know how to make spliffs, of course. Never. <laughs> okay. So there we have it. That's episode 21 of Some Stories and Meow Joanna. Um, and next time, episode 22, is Valentine's. Get out and val- what, around is Valentine's. It? Yeah. Little love stories. You're going to get loved up? No. Fucking face on you then. No, it makes me sick. No. Do you not really do romance? I mean, I do, but like all the public need to fucking share it all. And no, I mean, I don't really like do pay and double to go for a meal and stuff because no. no, fuck off. And the roses go through the roof, don't they? No, it's not for me. So the next episode's Valentine's anyway. Uh, and I am going to be doing a little bit of Valentine's stuff. It's oh. not like, it's not going to be like gushing romantic, is it to me? But it's interesting. Valentine's Massacre. Valentine's Massacre. That's what <laughs> it's it'd more be. like it. If this was all down to you, it'd just be all Massacre. Fucking hell. Yeah. So, uh, before I, uh, before we head off, um, if you haven't joined us on Patreon, yes. You need to join us on Patreon. I mean, you're missing out. there's two boss episodes over there. Um, we've got some other stuff planned as well. There's quite a few people over on Patreon now as well. Yeah. They're all starting to tell their friends and saying, get over here, it's good. Yeah. So look us up on Patreon. Um, you can also, um, we've got a little tip box as well. You can find that on our Facebook page. And I've started building our website. Exciting. Yeah, I've got to finish the other one first. Because like. you haven't got enough to do. I know, yeah. And we'll be putting other stuff on, on the website and there. But in the meantime, check us out on Facey, on Facebook, Instacom. <laughs> <laughs> come and say hello and uh, yeah chew the fat with us and stuff but uh, until then until next time we'll say goodbye thank, thank you, you for much. joining us and there we have it another day made better by listening to the curators of chaos thanks for dropping by and if you enjoyed the show we'd really appreciate you sharing your love for the pat the cell podcast with your friends don't forget give us a follow on our socials maybe leave us some five star reviews and feel free to send us an email to medic at the pat the cell podcast or even interact with us on facebook insta and our other socials because we love chatting to you be sure to stop by next week because as bowie says i don't know where i'm going next but i promise it won't be boring Catch you soon.